Going to get to the latest after the home of President Donald Trump was raided by the FBI. This is what it looked like yesterday as federal agents searched the president's home. Good evening. I'm Jamison Euler. And good evening. I'm Wendy Ryan. Thank you for joining us. Tonight we're following the latest in the unprecedented search of Mar-a-Lago. Earlier today, crowds gathered in support of the former president. Officials say the search was part of the ongoing Department of Justice investigation into the former president's alleged mishandling of classified documents. And the outrage from the former president's supporters is growing, and they're now taking aim at the FBI. I think every Republican believes that the FBI, when it comes to Trump and other organizations, have lost their mind. Meanwhile, House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy says when Republicans take back the House, they immediately will investigate the Justice Department. Officials say President Joe Biden and the White House had no prior knowledge of this search, and this was not the first time federal agents visited Trump's home. There are still few confirmed details involving that FBI search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home, but many are wondering how this happened right here in Florida. ABC Action News reporter Wendy Lane talks to a former FBI agent and a constitutional law professor to understand more. On Monday, the FBI raided former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. ABC News is reporting that the search was related to the 15 boxes of documents Trump took to Mar-a-Lago when he left the White House, some of which were marked classified. Stetson constitutional law professor Chara Torres Spellacy explains why that could lead to an FBI search. Presidential records are property of the United States. So it's not his personal property. And I'm not sure if he was under some mistaken belief about this or if he just took them anyway, but he is not allowed to keep those documents. Tampa attorney Todd Foster, who is a former FBI agent and former assistant U.S. attorney, says before a search is conducted, there is a long process, which includes an FBI agent convincing a federal judge to sign it is to convince the federal judge that probable cause exists to believe two things. Number one, that a crime has been committed, and number two, that evidence of that crime can be found in the place the agent seeks to search. Torres Spellacy says once it's signed, anything in the home that looks incriminating can be confiscated for the investigation. The former president saying they even broke into his safe. But some wonder if the FBI search was an overreach. And Foster says how it was executed still remains to be seen. But he says there are other methods of getting information that usually come first, such as asking him to voluntarily surrender the documents or getting a grand jury subpoena to get them. A search warrant issued for the home or at the home of a former president is an extreme measure. So one must ask, were less extreme measures available to achieve the same goal? that is to obtain the documents that were being sought. Others have wondered why Florida lawmakers did not step in. Torres Spellacy says there's nothing the state can do about an FBI investigation, and she says constitutionally, the former president is just like a regular citizen. And there's no special protection for ex-presidents. The FBI maintains that they do not comment on ongoing investigations, but Foster says a search like this had to be well planned. A search warrant of this level, of this magnitude, not magnitude as to what's being seized, but the magnitude of where it's taking place, in my view, had to be approved at the very highest levels of the Department of Justice. In Tampa, Wendy Lane, ABC Action News.